Hi guys, my name is Okoro Blessing in Kiroka and I'm popularly known as Blessing CEO. You're number one relationship therapist in Africa. I hope you guys are not sleeping because I have a very interesting story from my mail I have to share with you guys. Now, somebody's asking me, Blessing, how long am I supposed to date my boyfriend? How long am I supposed to date my boyfriend? I'm going to quickly read this story to you, to you guys so that you get to understand. So she said, good evening, blessing CEO, my number one relationship therapist. Yay. I've dated my boyfriend now for four years and I'm getting tired. Every time he's telling me he's not ready, I should wait. He's not ready, I should wait. I feel like I am wasting my time. It's been four years of series of abortion. I have stood by him four years of cheating, four years of disrespect, and yet he's not ready. I'm 37 years and I don't think I can wait anymore. I am so afraid. What if this guy does not marry me? What if he end up telling me story? You know, I've seen a lot of Nigerian movies and I see a lot of men disappoint women. This guy is a bloody cheat. But every time he cheats, he apologizes. Blessing, I want to leave, but where do I start from? How do I start up another relationship and another disappointment? What is the guarantee that the next person is actually going to marry me? Blessing, I'm confused. Should I stay or should I get out? I need your candid advice. Now, this is a very interesting story. And um, I decided to throw more light in it. Now, let's quickly pin down the topic. How long do I date before marriage? So, um, this is a very interesting topic. A 37 year old girl that have dated for four years and she's afraid. She's saying, how long is she supposed to be there? Because the guy is not even ready to marry her. She's afraid to go out of the relationship because she doesn't even know what life holds for her. Like they popularly used to say, the devil, you know, is better than the angel. You don't know a bed at hand is what many in the bush. So she wants to know. Should she stick her ass in the four years relationship or should she leave and take her chances? Now, let me tell you something. Let's start this way. If you're listening to me, there is no particular time to date people because we all have different races and different journey. But I'm going to tell you straight up as a woman, when you get to 30, don't date anybody for more than one year. If you are in your 20s, you can date somebody for five years, 10 years. But once you get to your 30s, do not date anybody for more than one year. You are wasting your time. Let me tell you something about relationship. You cannot know anybody. Even if you date somebody for 10 years, you cannot know anybody. People will show you the things that they want you to see. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I want to date. I want to know who she is. Let me tell you something. The more you marry with, the more they unwrap. Let me tell you something about attitude and character. I'm going to break it down for a lot of you. Attitude and character depends on circumstances. Some of you have not acted a certain way because you have not been in certain situations. That's the honest truth. That's why it's so easy for you to sit in the comfort of your home and judge people. Judging people is so easy because many times you have not been in that situation that person is. If you are in that same situation, you might even do worse. It's very easy to judge someone that has done abortion. It's very easy to judge someone that is doing prostitution. It's very easy to judge people, anything, they, any way they want to live their life. Baby mama, someone that got pregnant, very easy. Mm -hmm. But many of you have never been in that situation that they are. So that's the reason why I say, I don't give a particular time limit. Mm -hmm. But once you are 30, do not date anybody for more than one year. Especially when you are a woman. Now, when you are 30, I feel... You've been able to define the things that you want. So you need to look for a man that is ready, not a man that is still struggling. A 20-year-old girl can date an upcoming because she still has time to be doing love. Anybody that tells you that they want to get to know you for five years, most of them are wasting your time because you cannot know anybody. It is situations, it is circumstances, it is it's that begat character. What did I say? It is situations, circumstances that begat character. Some people are going to say you are rude. As some people that get to meet you and say you are rude, they never, they never explain why you are rude in such situations. Some people want to give you sheets and expect you to give them water to drink. It doesn't work that way. Sometimes you are rude based on the sea. Sometimes you react based on people's action. You did not just wake up and be rude. 
So I'm just trying to explain that sometimes it is circumstances that brings out a certain attitude. That's your woman that is very nice. That girl that is very patient. That girl that is very quiet. If you marry her, she can be a tiger. Why? Because you might even change when you marry her. A lot of men are no longer the men they wear when their wives were dating them. That's why when you marry people, you say, oh, my wife have changed. My boyfriend have changed. It is not just change. Circumstances bring all these things. Responsibility can make your husband to change. Yes. Responsibility can make your wife to change. There's a kind of responsibility a man is going to be carrying. Eh? Ha! What are you talking about? So when you were dating him, he's not going to be the same man because responsibility have changed. When you and your boyfriend was dating, you were just knocking him going to work. At, the responsibility was limited. But by the time he gets married to you, family responsibility, work responsibility, children responsibility, it takes a lot to manage. So anybody that is saying they want to date you for 10 years, 20 years, just because they want to know you, they just want to waste your time. Exactly. So to me, once you're 30, one year is okay for you to date anybody. And to the lady who actually sent this message, it is better to take your chances than waste your time. Many young people are so afraid to take their chances, both in relationship, both in their career, and in their lives in general. If you do not learn to take your chances, you will never be successful. If you cannot take risk, you can never be rich. Many of you are still poor today, not because you're not intelligent, not because you're not wise, not because you're not anything. Most of you are still poor and stagnant because you don't take chances. The difference between you and I is I can take chances. Yes, I can try a lot of things. I can do things. That's different. It's not like I'm smarter than you. And that's why when you take these chances, people will now start envying you. You're not envying me because I'm stronger. You're only envying the chances that I took. And that's why I said so many times, people do not envy the things that you do. People envy how you do it. A lot of people don't want to put in effort, but they envy your efforts. Most things you admire in other people, it's not extraordinary. It's just an effort. You are sitting in your house. You don't want to wear makeup. Anytime somebody wear makeup, you are judging them. But when you see a beautiful girl out there, you want to be like her. Do you know how long it takes a slay queen to slay? Do you know how long it takes to do makeup? But some of you don't want to put in effort. You just want to come on Instagram and judge people. This girl self. Now only makeup, she's a big do. You see somebody looking good, you are admiring the person. You don't want to put in the effort, but you want to achieve the same result. It's not possible. These are the issues. A lot of people who are envious are people who don't put effort. Are people who just sit down and wait for magic to happen. You just saw blessing driving the Mercedes Benz. You want to own the Mercedes Benz. You don't know what blessing did to get the Mercedes Benz. These are the issues. A lot of people do a lot, both legal and illegal. There's an effort somewhere. Even if you are an armed robber today, there's an effort somewhere. You did not sleep. You took a risk to one rob a bank. Even if you're a Yahoo boy, there's an effort somewhere. Those of you that are doing Yahoo Plus, you go go bush, you go babala. They do a whole lot to be able to get to where they are. So many of you just want it, but you don't want to put in effort. So effort is the work that goes into it. And in relationship, if you do not learn to take your chances, you will end up with bad people. You end up with toxic people. I'd rather take my chances than waste my time. The great, as, as a human being, what you should feel. But is AC on? I'm already having cold. As, as, um, as a human being, your greatest fear should be taking your chances. Sorry. Your, um, sorry, as a human being, your greatest fear should be wasting your time, not taking your chances. Sorry about that. As a human being, your greatest fear should be wasting your time, not taking your chances. You should be more afraid of wasting your time than trying new things. But no, some of you are afraid of taking your chances and you enjoy wasting your time. How can you sit down and be wasting something you cannot get back? Why wasting your time should be your greatest fear is because you can't take it back. Time and energy is something you cannot take back. Once you've wasted it, you've wasted it. So why should you be comfortable wasting your time than taking your chances? What is the meaning of taking chances? Chances simply means you want to try new things. What is opportunity? Opportunity simply means chances. New things. You don't know what is out there for you. And life is chance. The reason why God created us and God did not show us what we are going to be in the next five years is because God wants to test our chances. Yes. If God did not want us to take chances, God will open book and show you where you are going to be in the next five or in the next ten years. Yes. 
Some of us are destined to be great, but you must go out there and take your chances. So in a relationship, that is what you should do. So if I'm that woman, I'd rather take my chances and sit. You've wasted four years of your life. You still want to wait five years. Do you now see why a lot of women are bitter? I made a video and I said something. A lot of women are bitter because of expectation. A man did not do anything. Now, this girl that have been in this relationship for four years now, she'll come and start telling me, blessing is not easy now. Blessing is not easy to leave a man now. Blessing, I don't know where to go to now. Blessing, I don't know where to start from. Guess what? It's not easy to leave a man for four years, Shabby. But when the man leave you, you will go. It's not easy to leave a man for four years. But when you hear that the man is getting married, you're going to leave him. Why can't you take decisions on your own? There's a video I made where I said, as a woman, you need to come out of a man's shadow. Some of you hide under men's shadows. That is the problem. You're waiting for the man to drive you away before you go. If the man does not drive you, you will not have your common sense to go. A smart woman should know when the relationship is done. Some of you are sitting in a relationship that is over. You and I, you know that it's over. But no, you would rather sit there and waste your time for five years, six years, seven years and wait for the man to throw you out. Then when he throws you out, you start to sing your pity party. It's not fair. God will punish you. You start to swear and knock your breast on the ground. Such things don't work. God has given you the power of what is called decision. When something is not working, you bounce. I ask you again as a woman. So do you now see why I say a lot of women stay in relationship because of expectation? So many times a man did not do anything. Don't forget that the man is not tying you in the relationship. When you start to lament and you start to cry, remember that you are the one that stayed in the relationship. Because sometimes when you see a lot of girls saying, I stayed with a man for four years, I stayed with a man for five years, the man did not tie you rope. He did not tie you, he did not use chain to hold you. You're not a trio. You are, you are calling, the, the, the woman is calling the guy a bloody cheat, but she cannot still go. Tomorrow now, when this guy go and marry another woman, you come and start crying for us on Instagram. Can you people be sensible for once? As a woman, you need to be smart enough to know when to take a walk. Like I said, why are you afraid to take your chances? Why are you afraid to go out there? The only women who are afraid to take their chances are women who have lost their confidence. The only women who are afraid to take their chances are women who have lost their identity. And that's the reason why sometimes I always go for the women. Because the moment most of you just get a relationship, you lose your identity. The moment you just find a man, it's not about a man, you forget yourself. So because a lot of women have forgotten themselves, there's nothing for them to even go out with. That's the reason why you can't leave. That's the reason why it's very easy for a man to dump you. Because you get into a relationship and it's about man, man, man. Some of you will insult your family. Leave your mother, leave your father, leave your brother, leave your sister. Some of you will throw away all your friends. Some of you will throw the most useful things in your life just because you found a man. The man will leave you. So the problem is, the moment you just find one man, nothing else matters to you. That is not how life is supposed to function. If you find a man and throw away every other thing in your life, you are an idiot. What did I say? If you find a man... And you want to throw away every other thing in your life. You are an idiot. Love is not foolish. Neither is love an island. Don't forget, there were people who molded you to the woman that you are today. For a man to see you and love you. There were people who molded you to the men that you are today. For a woman to see you and love you. So because you find love, you are not supposed to throw people in your life. Maturity means knowing how to manage people in your life. You will know how to manage your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your colleagues, your friends. You don't say because you found a man, everything does not matter to you. You are my life. You are my world. You know, when I hear you people making out, I'll be like, I just go mad. You forget yourself the moment you find a man. That is always the problem. So because you've forgotten yourself, there is nothing else for you to hold on to. That's the reason why it's so difficult for you to leave. That's the reason why you look as if when you leave the man, you will die. When you leave the man, nothing is going to happen to you. Because when the man leaves you, you will not die. Wait, why is it that when you leave the man, you will die? But when the man leaves you, you will not die. Because a lot of times, this man you are afraid to leave, end up leaving you. True of us. Your greatest fear 
is to leave a man. But he will still leave you. That same thing you don't want to face. A man will still give it to you. That's the reality of life. Then you now come and start seeking pity party. Now come and start praying to God. Such things don't work. Such swear does not work. You cannot sit down somewhere and see that somebody is wasting your time and still sit your ass there. You are shooting yourself in the leg. If you pray from today to tomorrow, God does not answer your prayers. You need to be able to use your common sense. Stop going to places you're not wanted. Relationship cannot happen without two people. What made you love this person was the reciprocation when you guys met. What makes love actually interesting is reciprocation. I love you, I love you too. You put in effort, I put in effort. If a relationship is one-sided, it's no longer a relationship. You're on your own. And so many times, many of you are on your own. You need to learn to take this decision. Stop losing yourself just because you found love. Stop losing yourself just because you found a man. Stop losing yourself just because you found a woman. No, it's not supposed to be that way. Don't forget, this person came into your life because of you. This is the irony. Somebody sees blessings, see you're looking beautiful, looking hot. Remember, a lot of people are coming to me because I am blessing see you. A lot of people like me because of the things I have to offer. A lot of people like me because they say, oh, blessing, you have wisdom, blessing, you are intelligent, blessing, you are outspoken, blessing, you are bold. Don't forget, there's a reason why they are loving me. I've said this before. If I no longer do those things you are loving me for, you will stop loving me. It's a subconscious thing. I also gave an instance one time. Let Tiwa Savage not sing for five years. Let Davido not release music for five years. You will subconsciously replace him with the person that is singing back to back. It shows you that it's not about Davido, person. Because you don't know Davido. It's about what he has to offer. So if Davido, Tiwa Savage want to remain in the limelight, they must continue to grow themselves and sing music. Without that, the love we have for them, we die. That is what happens in relationship. Once you enter this relationship, you stop growing yourself. They leave you. The moment you get into relationship, that is when you're supposed to double your growth. Because the person did not just see you as a nobody. Something attracted the person. So whatever attracted that person to you is what you keep growing. You don't enter relationship and relax. The moment you enter relationship, that's where work begins. It's even when you are single that you relax. Because when you're single, there's no expectation. Once you're in a relationship and you get married, ah, that is when the work starts. But no, you put go and relax in relationship and marriage and work when you're single. When you're single, you don't need work. You don't need to be lounging. Carry your anyhow you want to carry your But once you're in a relationship, there's work. Yes, so these are the issues. You put use the wrong things at the right time. You are single, you put in work. You marry, you don't put in work. That's not how it's supposed to be. be. If you are single, no work. Once you're married, work starts. So it's because most of you, especially women, you leave yourself. Once you find a man, you feel that you, 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 you finally made it in this life. The moment you just find one man, just give you one aboki ring. You will not let us to hear what all you'll be doing is like this. You think, ah, you finally made heaven because they gave you one aboki ring. You've not, that, is where your, that is where your journey starts. That is where your work starts. That is where your tax begin. So, so stop losing yourself just because you have found love, in quotes. And that's why these days, love is so irritating. Because you see a young girl that is doing well, looking beautiful. The moment she just finds relationship, you cannot recognize the girl again. There are some women I know that when they were single, if you see these women, Jesus, the moment they marry, you won't be able to put the married person and the single person. They change. They become, they look, start to look scruffy, scruffy. They start to look like they are suffering. You will not be asking, is the marriage actually suffering? No. But because you feel that I'm married, you relax. No. That's where work starts. You need to continuously, if you want people to be coming to you, as a woman, if you want to be selecting men, be growing. Growth gives you selection. Growth gives you varieties. Growth gives you choices. It is only when you grow, that's when you have choice. If you don't grow, you're not going to have choice. You're going to be going with anything they give you. In fact, when they even bring it to you, you'll be saying, ah, let me manage it. They even remembered me today. It is only when you grow, that's when you can be chosen. Some of you are not growing. That's why you are afraid to live a toxic relationship. If you are growing, hey, you can't take rubbish. Oh my God. What makes you think that people stay in your life? I've told you this in one of my videos. Nobody loves you. Everybody's coming to you for benefits. 
because of who you are, because of what you've added to your life and because of the value you can give to them. If people are useless to you, you're not going to rate them high. What is priority? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's quickly break this down. What does it mean to prioritize somebody? You know, sometimes English is hard. Priority simply means somebody that is more valuable to you. There's some people in my life that are not, are not my blood. But when I see their call, I call them before I call my blood. Priority. There's some people that will call me now and I see their missed call. I will call them before I call my brother. Because my brother probably just wants to call and say, Oh, Nkiri, okay, why are you doing? You it's just family talk. But there's this person that calls me. I know that there's something important the person is called. That's prioritizing someone. And people can only prioritize you depending on your value. On what you're doing for them. There are some, there are some, some people now, if you see your account officer's call and see your wife's call, you call your account officer before your wife. Because money is involved. You don't know what have happened to your bank account. Your wife, you know, she probably wants to tell you, baby, please buy cereal as you're coming. Baby, are you home? Baby, please buy water. So you're going to call your account officer before your wife. Priority. It simply means you prioritize people based on the value that they give to you. So the struggle is to be valuable to people's life. If you are val valuable, you will not struggle to be prioritized. So women will say, prioritize me, I'm your wife. You don't just have to be a wife to be prioritized. A man can marry you and you'll be his fifth priority because you're not valuable to him. You can be a man's girlfriend and you'll be his tenth priority because you're not valuable to him. His secretary might even be more valuable to you. It's not because he's sleeping with his secretary. You know, some people just feel that the moment I start to sleep with a man, I've, got, I've made it in this life. Now lie. There are some men that are not sleeping with their receptionist, but their receptionist is more valuable than their girlfriend. Why? Because the receptionist brings him more. She's the one that does the brain work. She's the one that organizes him. She's the one that the girlfriend is just to come and knock. So if you want people to prioritize you, you must put value in their life. It is value that makes them to take you up there. Without value, nobody's going to prioritize. If you like, be fine. Let your nyash be big from here to tomorrow. They won't prioritize you. So when you have this understanding, about value and priority. You will work on yourself. You won't force it. You will always want to be useful to human beings. What does it mean to leave a footprint in people's life? Value. Why are you following me? Have you met me before? No. Have you seen me before? No. Have I given you money before? No. Do I feed you? No. But you follow me. Some of you turn on your post notification because of blessing CEO. It takes you to be giving people something. For people to be on your live video by 12. I have 332 people watching me by 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. in the morning. If what I'm saying is not valuable, they will not be here. So, what do I do as a coral blessing? I will continue to equip myself. Because I now understand that people are coming to me based on the value that I'm giving them. They're not coming to me because I'm a coral blessing. No. They're coming to me because there is something they want to learn from a coral blessing. So what do I do? I continue to put in effort. I start to do courses. I start to do research. I want to equip myself because I now understand that people are here for this value. You continue to increase the value. From um, masters, you do PhD. From PhD, why do you think people want to grow themselves? Value. It is value that makes you useful in the society. It is value that makes you useful in your relationship. Some of your husband and your boyfriends don't regard you because you are not valuable. You are not an empty concom. It is only when they want to fuck that they call you. Only sex. And sex is not value. Sex is just fun. Sex is enjoyment. There should be more you can give to people apart from knack. Because knack is just max. We want to kill ourselves one hour, we die there. Now, when we get up from this bed, what next? So nobody prioritizes you because of sex. If you are giving someone sex and giving someone something else, ah, then it's sweet. There must be something to your name. That's value. So, you know, when we are speaking all this big English, big English, big English, you know, it's so hard. So when you get into a relationship, you should struggle to put in value than sex. Let me tell you something. A lot of my exes, they still call me for advice. If my exes are getting married, they will call me and tell me about their girlfriends. If my exes want to go into businesses, they are my exes too. So, bless me, say the business for I want to, I need your, I need your candid opinion. Value. In as much as we are no more dating, we are no more having sex, they still this, they still where they place blessing. Because you know that ah, this girl is valuable. There's something when you are valuable, people don't want to lose you. No matter what you look like. 
I've seen people that hold their cook more than another person in their life, more than their blood relation. And you know the funniest part? It is easy to throw you away when you are not valuable. Ah. It is very... Let me give you guys an instance. I don't have too many people in my life. And I have very people I call every day. I'm going to give you an instance. My stylist, Ben. I'm going to use him to do this example. I'm going to use him as a value. Now, Ben is a stylist. But as time went on, he became a friend. Because, ha, huh, Ben is the person that will make sure that your clothes is on fleek, your hair is on fleek. Makeup artist cannot do shakara for us. Makeup is on fleek. He wants to make sure that there's no rope. Oh my God. If I, at some point, I got so addicted to him. Now, I got addicted to him because there's a strong value. There's something he's doing. Like, I cannot even comment. I can't even do without. I can't even do without calling Ben a day. <laughs> now, you see that he has become closer to me, even more than most of my blood related people. There are some of my nieces and cousins I don't call. I've never called them for one year or two years because they're not doing anything for me. So you see that people become closer to you based on the value that they give to you. It's natural. Even in your homes, in your family. Don't provide for your parents for one year. Let's assume you are the older one and your younger one is the one bringing money for food. Your parents will never remember you. It's a subconscious thing. The more valuable you are, the more people prioritize you. It's just natural. And the more valuable you are, people cannot do without you. They can't throw you away. So... Instead of increasing your sexual libido, increase your value. So long as you are valued, people will look for you. That's a strategy to success. Value. Ha, leave it. They go find you. Because you'll be needable. I've said it before. What does it mean to be needable? Needable simply means you make yourself valuable. They will not like you, but they will need you. There are lots of things you don't like, but you need it. If you go, you close your eye, you will buy it. So that's value. So if you are in a relationship, you are in a marriage, or you're getting involved in a relationship or, or a marriage, don't focus so much on a man or a woman. Focus on growing yourself. Because a lot of people are with you because of the growth. If you're not growing, nobody will come around you. So when you have this understanding, you're not going to leave yourself. And you're not so also going to be afraid of taking a walk when you constantly grow yourself. Now let me tell you what it means to constantly grow yourself. Growth. Is what you impute in yourself as a human being. And what you impute in yourself as a human being, nobody can take it away from you. You can remove this, my clothes now. You can take away my necklace. You can lose my hair. You can bag my hair. You can do every other thing to me in this life. But you can't take away what is inside here. Except I have memory loss. That's, one, that's, one, that's the great thing about value. People will rob you of everything. But what will make you come back is that thing that you know. They can't take away what you know. You know it is that you know it. When you have this understanding, you will always want to know. Because it is that thing that you know that attracts people to you. That's value. Value simply means in a nutshell. Value simply means in a nutshell. What do you know? That's the meaning of value. Some of you don't know anything. You're hearing value, 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 value. Value simply means in a layman's word what do you know it is that thing you know that will attract people to want to know you hmm caption let me write this down what do you know it is that thing you know that thing you know that makes people want to know you what you know is the better fame some of you are saying I want to be famous I want to be famous what do you know what are you famous for when you are famous it simply means you know something there's something you are doing huh? some of you don't know anything that's why you can never be famous so when you have this understanding you are going to focus in knowing something some people know how to act that's the only thing they can do in their life some people know how to twerk some know how to talk some know how to dance. Some know how to sing. Fame. You master that thing that you know very well. People now begin to know that you know this thing very well. They now begin to come to you and pay you for that thing that you know. That is fame. That is money. People pay you for the things you know. Mechanic. You go and pay mechanic for the things you know. You cannot fix car. Panebita. What he knows. 
Pana Vita no go school, Pana Vita no be your level, but you go pay him for the thing where you know. Electrician, what he knows. What does it mean to go and learn? You want to know something. So this, this is very simple. Some of you don't know anything. You don't know Jack. So if you want to be famous and you want to be needable, you want to be valuable, take one thing and master it and know it very well. If it's hair, go and learn how to make hair and know how to make hair. If just know one thing and master it very well, that is fame, that is value. So people are now going to come to you because you know how to do this particular thing very well. Finish. You know, this life is so easy. It's most of you that just make it look so hard. What do you know? Some of you are on this video because of what I know. You're not here because of blessing C. You're here because you want to know what blessing C you know. And I keep teaching you the things that I know. The one I don't know, I don't talk. If you ask me anything about football, you ask me anything about politics, you ask me anything about, I don't know, shit. So I know relationship, marriage, very, very well. So most of you now are coming to my page because of the things that I know. And I'm also going to other people's page because of what they know. So people will always come to you because of what you know. So go and know something. When you know something, you're not going to be afraid of taking a walk when people do not treat you right. I hope I've been able to teach you something. I hope you've learned something. And for the beautiful woman who asked me how long do I date before marriage, there is no time. And like I said from the beginning of the video, once you are 30, don't date anybody for more than one year. One year. Anybody that does not know you for one year should just carry their this and go. Go and know another person. If somebody cannot know you for one year, okay, don't waste my time. Let me try the next door. One year max. So when you are 30, you look for a man that is ready. Some of you women, you are 30. You want to date a guy that is 22. That is not ready. You need to be able to date people that are ready like you. And that's why I said... Many times we don't date our mentality. I'm very sorry. There are some kind of men I cannot date. Be you. There are some kind of men I can't date. You know why? When you say there are some kind of men you can't date, people think it's pride. It's not pride. We grow ourselves to a certain level so that we can outgrow some certain men. What did I say? We outgrow ourselves, we grow ourselves to a certain level so that we can outgrow some certain men. Even you as a man, you grow yourself to some certain level so that you can choose the kind of woman you want. Because men will choose the kind of women they want. Women will outgrow a certain man. Because in this part of the world, a woman does not even have so much right to be choosing. Men have more power to choose. So we as women will outgrow men. And you can only outgrow men with the things that you have done for yourself. I can't be working for myself. I can't be growing myself to a particular level and go and date some certain men. I'm talking for myself. I date men who have my kind of mental capacity. Some men don't think like me. I'm not dating you because I'm trying to form. I'm dating you because my mental capacity is higher than your own. And when you date people who do not have your mental capacity, they'll make you to run mad. Because if you are saying A, they'll be saying Z. If you are saying B, they'll be saying V. If you are saying F, they'll be saying P. That is what happened to a lot of you in a relationship and marriage. You date people who do not have your mental capacity. You are going to Lagos. You are dating someone that is going to Togo. You don't understand Togo. That's the issue. So relationship is stressful because we keep dating people that don't understand where we are going to. So, the misunderstanding in the relationship that you'll be explaining to the day you die. What is misunderstanding? It simply means you are talking and talking and somebody does not want to see reasons with you. It's not because the person does not want to see reasons with you. The person does not have your mental capacity. The kind of men I date, I don't talk too much. The moment I make a point, they know where I'm going to. But it's the kind of man I'm going to date. Ah! I will explain. I will explain. I will explain. I will speak English. From the English, we will quarry. From the quarry. Oh! That is the reason why a relationship is stressful to you. Do you now see the reason why I said I cannot date some certain kind of men? Because I have outgrown their mental capacity. If you date a man who is not in the same mental capacity as you, you run mad. Allah, that is okay. If you date a woman who is not in the same mental capacity like you, you will run mad. It's vice versa. So the point is, we do not check people who have 
<coughs> I call it direction. In a relationship, date people who are going to where you are going to. Because when you date people who are going, going to where you, the journey will be very smooth. But no. You are going to Lagos. You are dating someone that is going to Liberia. These are the issues. People start to fight on the road. You say no. She said no. I'll take you to Liberia. You don't understand Liberia. You don't been to Liberia before. There are issues. So it's okay for you to select as a woman. You did not grow yourself to this point. There was a day I went for a meeting, and we were just two women in that meeting. We had about nine men, two women, so we're eleven. Do you know what all the men were saying on the table? Blessing, you are so quiet. Too. They spoke for almost 45 minutes. I did not say pim, unlike me. Me, they like to talk. Then I said, ah, this woman, you are so quiet. You've not even contributed. I said, no, I don't have anything to say. I was just, smile. I was just pressing my phone and smiling. When they were done talking, 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 and arguing, arguing, I carried my bag and I left. Do you know why I did not talk? Those men were a bunch of daft. If I had involved in that conversation, maybe I would have slapped one of them. You know when people are talking? In fact, they were not in the same school of thoughts like me. They were talking off point that if I had opened my mind, maybe I would have landed one person in a slap. I respected myself and was pressing my phone. That's what I mean by me. Imagine marrying one of those men. I could not use butt to break one person's head now. <laughs> These are the issues. Now, you can imagine how I was. They had money. They had money. They, they, they were not poor men, no. I'm not talking about poverty. I'm talking about mentality. It's like, it's like going to school and marrying, marrying an illiterate. Illiteracy is not even school service. Exposure. Some men are not exposed. Jesus. Some people can be so handsome, but their mentality can be so, can be so ugly. So sometimes, we do not focus on mentality. Don't marry people that see life the way you don't see life. Because it will be very hard for you. That's the honest truth. Look at what these men were saying. Um, I'm a kind of man. I'm a kind of man. If I marry a woman right now, if I cheat and I catch my woman, she go go. If, I, if she cheats and I catch her, she go still go. Cheating and no mountain for African man. Oh, Hannah, hello, hello. A woman is supposed to put her head down and be ready for her husband anytime. No, those kind of irritating discussion. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I never talk. If I cheat, you will go. If you cheat, I was irritated. At some point, I had to put my headset. Imagine dating or marrying such man. And that's what happens to a lot of you. You date people and marry people that do not have the same mental capacity like you. The moment you do that, that is the beginning of your suffering. Because you will talk, 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 talk. Your head will be expanding. A lot of you that are always nagging. is because you keep marrying men that don't have the same mental capacity like you. So, if you don't have people that have that mental capacity, you can't have a conversation. And that's the reason why I select my friend a lot. And that's the reason why I told you, I'm, I'm close to very few people that understand me. Conversation is easy when people... Before you even say something, they already know where you are coming from. Yeah, ah! Or some people, you explain. You explain. From your explanation, you start to shout. From shouting, you start to nod. Just because you're explaining something to somebody. So mental capacity is very, very important in relationship. But mental capacity might not work in this part of the world because a lot of you women are hungry. I've said it in a couple of my videos. And I know the chairman. Many women are hungry. They will hardly date for mental capacity. You will only date for benefits. You're just looking for a rich man that you go and sit down in his house and be eating money. When this man give you money to eat, you now want to talk. Madam, shut up. You did not enter the marriage to go and be talking. You enter the marriage to go and eat money. So eat money and anybody that is eating money shuts up. You don't know. When you start to eat money, you become more quiet. Money shuts you up. So a lot of you go into a relationship and marriage to go and eat money. So when you enter the marriage, just sell your voice. When you say you want to marry a man because of money, sell your voice. Don't talk. Shut up. You cannot be eating a man's money and be talking. It doesn't work that way. So you need to choose a struggle. Whether you want to go and eat money and sell your voice, or you want to marry for the right reason. You want to marry to contribute to a man's life. You want to marry to be part of a man's life. Or you want to marry to go and chop money. So the problem is that a lot of women don't have struggle. You are neither here nor there. So choose your struggle if you're hungry. Okay, you're going there to eat money. Eat money and just shut your mouth up. If you're not going to eat money, you look for people who have same mental capacity as you do. And relationship and marriage is going to be the best thing that has ever happened to you. With this people of mine, 
I hope I've been able to convince and not to confuse you that there's no time limit to date anybody. So thank you very, very much for coming up on my live video. God bless every one of you. So if you have any questions, I always take two questions on my live videos. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me before I go to bed. So we're going to take two questions. Two questions from you guys. We'll do two questions. Somebody saying money over mental capacity. They are the ones. They will still choose money over mental capacity. Tomorrow they'll come and be doing pity party for us on Instagram. Tomorrow they'll start snapping pictures and be showing us where their husband blew them, where their husband cuts them with knife, where their husband beats them. You are seeing them typing money over mental capacity. When he start to beat you, don't disturb us. When he start to beat you, don't do video. My own is people will not come and be disturbing us. A lot of these women that are, that are always looking for pity, you marry the man for money. When he start to blow, you're not shouting money. You don't want to go and walk. You don't want to go and do something for yourself. When he start to beat you, you know, hey, he blow me, he blow me. These are the issues. So when you know you want to go and eat a man's money, you're ready to collect blow and slap. Don't disturb us. Don't come on Instagram and come and be disturbed. I'm looking for someone that will pity you. I'll be disturbing bloggers. Blessing, they have beat me, they have beat me. When you were eating money, you did not call me. You married him for money. Now they are beat you, you are calling me. When you were spending his money, Driving flashy car, they were buying you Range Rover. You were living, but did you call my name? You people, when you are enjoying, you never remember blessing. How many of you have remembered blessing when you are enjoying? It's only when they beat you, or when the guy break your heart, or when they do you. That's when you, the only time you remember blessing is when you're suffering. How many of you have sat and said, Oh, this woman that is always talking, let me send her recharge, let me send her money? Never. Some of you will never DM me except the man break your heart. Uh, you finish making decision after making decision of enjoyment. You finish eating the money. Come, it's me that now come and carry your body on your head. Go and pay for consultation, please. Don't disturb me. Don't come with all those your heartbreak story that disturb me. Because when you're eating the money, you do not call my name. Respect yourself. <coughs> Next question, please. Somebody said, I don't easily see men of the same capacity as mine. How do I locate them? I don't know how you locate them. If we're talking about mental capacity, we are not looking for location. It's more of interaction. You cannot define people's mental capacity by locating them. You can only define their mental capacity when you interact with them. So if you said you've not found a man that have your mental capacity, it simply means you are looking for slave or maybe you are looking for beard gang. A man who have the same mental capacity as you do might not have the physical capacity. You can see a man that can relate to you, can communicate with you, but he's short. He doesn't have beards. He doesn't have hair on his chest. He doesn't have big man who doesn't have big prick. Huh? So some of you go for physical capacity and leave mental capacity. So stop deceiving yourself by telling me you did not see. You have seen. But he didn't have the physical capacity that you want. That is why he did not care to listen to his mental capacity. For you to get people's mental, you must have conversations. Uh -huh. And some girls will never have conversation with you except you are tall, black, with big prick. That is when they, and people who, a lot of people who have big prick to have sex. God will not give you complete full package. He will remove small, 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 small things. So, so maybe you are looking for the mental capacity in a man that has big prick. Exactly. Some men, their senses, they are prick. Exactly. Exactly. God will put all of them here. So the only time they are thinking is when they are doing this. How do you want the mental capacity to flow? So, so uh, I think you are looking for the mental capacity in the wrong places. <laughs> you need to go to the right places and look for it and have more of conversations with people. Why is it that people who are not well-mannered or educated are treated better than people who are well-mannered and educated and valuable? <coughs> I think that your question is just your personal perception. Don't generalize. You don't generalize with your personal perception and your personal experience. That thing you are saying is, is personal to you. It's not generic. So it's a personal, it's a personal assumption in your head. It's not generic. But in the relationship now, it's obvious that he is being rigid in the relationship. It's hard to get a valid conversation and all. Very nonchalant. Now, you are the one saying that he's really, he's nonchalant. What are you still doing there? You know, funny enough, I don't know how, I don't know how people complain so much about what they don't like and yet they cannot leave. I still, I'm still doing a research on that. 
you are complaining about this pillow that this pillow has nail each time you put your head on this pillow this pillow will choke you you complain about this pillow that ah this pillow is dirty you complain ah this pillow is sticky every time you sleep on this pillow you'll be having crock on your face you will still be sleeping on the pillow is your neck tied to the pillow this pillow is choking you this pillow is dead you this pillow is giving you crock -crow. anytime you wake up from the pillow you have you have um dark knuckles or something i mean you have black spots this pillow is giving you reaction this pillow is giving you eczema you are still sleeping on the pillow so i still find it very weird how you will sit down and complain so bad about people yet you can't leave them is that not madness that's madness and some of you are mad it's weird to me because i can't be complaining about something and i'm still there no it's either if there's pain in this pillow i notice that the thing is choking me i look for the pin and remove it i know that this pillow is dirty i will remove the pillowcase and wash it i am a person i like to find solution since i have identified the problem i find solution but no your own, you identify problem and be complaining for the rest of your life. Well, don't you guys get tired of complaining? That is the issue. You have identified the problem. Solve it now. No. You sit down there and be lamenting. This is my husband. This is my husband. This oh, yeah, leave him now. No. Find solution now. No. You just want to be lamenting. Self pity. Some of you like pity party. You're just looking for who pity you and tell you, hey, yeah, the pillow they took you. Ah, okay, sorry. Oh. Turn the pillow the other side. You say, ah, you see, they took me. Hey, yeah. The pillow, some of you like pity party. Some of you are not looking for solution. You are looking for pity. Somebody that just say, hey, yeah, sorry, oh. Hey, the guy, they cheat on you. He, they cheat on me, oh. He don't sleep with like four girls. Say, hey, yeah. Hey, God is in control. Hey, yeah. Man, wicked, though. Why you go get fine girl like you, they sleep with you? You go come say, I don't even know. I don't know what thing they find for other women. I don't even know. Some of you, that's all you want. You enjoy complaining. You enjoy that pity. You enjoy that, eh, uh hey. -huh. Some of you, don't. some people don't want solution. They just want pity. Some people are sending me mail, not because they want solution. Some people are sending me mail because they want me to post it so I people can pity them on the comment section. You don't know. Some people are not sending you stories for a solution. They will not leave the guy. They just want you to come and you see somebody say, this guy is wicked. I have done five abortions for him. I have done 20 abortions for him. Bless him, please post my story. They want you to post the story so that other people will insult the guy. Yet, they will not leave the guy. Is it not weird? Have you not seen where they will insult somebody? The girl is still there. You will not be wondering, what the, so why do you not ask me to post the story? Because in your story, for every time people send me story, it simply means they have identified the problem. I want to show you what my DM looks like. This is what my DM looks like. Can you see it? 99 plus. All these 99 plus messages are stories. Oh. They will not still leave the guy. Oh. See my email. 471. This is my Gmail. 471 email. See my Yahoo. 508. All of them is story. They just want blessing to post the story. Let people just talk let people help them insult their boyfriend and they will not leave so you see that this relationship is weird and it's good business because some of these people don't have sense they don't want advice they just want pity that's all so i keep asking how come you have identified the problem yet you cannot go it simply means you are the foolish one when i talk people will say blessing you are rude blessing you are harsh blessing you are arrogant then don't send me foolish messages because i get irritated easily even as a relationship expert, I don't want stupid people around me. Seriously. If you know you know you are foolish, don't come around because I'll finish you. I'm not that kind of relationship expert that you come and start telling me. Listen, don't bring it to me. Carry your wall and sit down there. Because there's some stories you get to hear and you're like, ah, I am 22. I've been with a guy. I've had three abortions. Blessing, I don't know how to leave him. He doesn't want to. He doesn't love me. He's cheating on me. Blessing, I'm talking to you right now. This is my boyfriend. Even have three other girls. And we are fighting for him. I will cook today. The other girl will cook tomorrow. The other one will cook next tomorrow. So what do you want me to tell you now? As you are... Somebody is telling you that I chose to be stupid. The person have chosen... So why are you writing me since you have decided to be stupid in the relationship? So as you are writing me now, I should now I should be clapping for you. Ah, happy stupidity. I don't get it. You just some people just enjoy suffering. I've, I've I've said it before. 
I've said it before. Some people enjoy. Some people are born to suffer. That's what they don't like to suffer. They enjoy it. So <coughs> sometimes you allow them to suffer their suffer. Some people don't need help. That's something. Don't leave them. Maybe enjoy their emotional suffer. So with this few point of mind. Somebody said, what if I'm married? Is it right to walk away from the marriage? This question you asked me right now is a stupid question. Whoever asked me the question, I am married. Is it right to walk away from the marriage? What is, am I the one that puts you in the marriage? What do you mean, is it right to walk? If you want to walk away, is anybody telling you there? You walked into the marriage. And what you use in walking into the marriage is decision. How come walking out? You now want me to tell you what to do. When you were marrying the man, did you tell? Did I, did you, did I come to tell you? Why did you come to ask me blessing? Marrying this man, is he right? You are marrying. You are not coming to ask me whether you should go. Now me put you for there. I can only make decisions for you that I put you. If it's me that told you to go and marry the man, I can tell you to go. I know we are telling me, should you walk away? How did you walk in before? No, be your two legs. You just come out now. Decision. <coughs> Some people want you to make decisions for them. But they will not take it. I can't make decisions for you. You made decision to marry the man. You made decision to have sex with the man. You made decision to do abortion. The same power that you have to make it is the same power you can have to break it. Nobody will break what you made for you. I've said it before. That's why so many times your prayers can never be answered. Do you know why God will not answer most of your prayers? Because God will not break what you use your hand to make. That's why sometimes you will pray to God from today to tomorrow, nothing will happen. You made something. You will break it by yourself. God will not break it for you. God will only break the things that he made. And God comes in when you do not have power over situation. You don't know. Some of you don't understand your Bible. Some of you don't even know what Christianity is about. God shows himself in a place that you don't have power over. That's why he is God. And that's why it is called a miracle sometimes. He will come when there is no helper. He will come when you, you don't have power over the decision. You don't even know what to do. God will not come in when you go and choose boyfriend. And you're not start praying to God that you want to go. Is it him that puts you there? How, okay, you want God now to come and lift you from the relationship. Now you go still use your... Are you crippled? So you see why sometimes when I see some people in church praying, I'll just be laughing at their foolishness. What are you praying for exactly? You are praying over the choices that you make. You made. You cannot break. You chose to marry this man. The man want to kill you. You don't want to go. You're waiting for God to come and say, is it God that married the man for you? No, he didn't marry the man for you. So, the only thing God will do for you in any marriage is to be guiding you to make right decision, to meet the right people to talk to, to meet the right guide. God will not remove you from any situation that you put yourself. Go and read your Bible again. For those of you that are acting Christian, if you go and choose wrong man, your husband start beating you, you start to pray. And your husband start to cheat, you start to pray. Your husband do this one, you start to... Now, God put you for there. He didn't put you in that situation. So if your husband starts to cheat, it is you that will go if you don't want to go. It is you that will stay if you don't want to stay. Prayer does not solve such thing. Don't stop letting your pastors to deceive you. You don't pray your way out of that. Decision is what makes it happen. You will be praying for guide. You will be praying for God to send you the right counsel. To talk to the right people. That is where prayer comes in. But when it comes to decision, my darling, you are going to make it by yourself. You don't run away from that. Because you chose the man. You chose the woman. God, will not, you cannot pray your way out of that one. Because if God has told you not to marry that person, you will play blind. There are some men in your life that God has given you 25 signs not to date. You are still dating him. God has shown you 20. You say no. You do as if you say, God, is that you? There are some women that God has given you 50 signs not to marry. You marry them. So even if God now tell you not to marry this woman, you go see Maria. How many things have God asked us not to do? Are you not doing it? Shabbat God gave you 10 commandments. He said, don't fornicate. He said, don't lie. He said, don't commit adultery. Don't thief. You know they do, am? Everything God asks us not to do, are we not doing it? It's now the one that you now chose. You're not telling God. The one that even God said, don't do. Have you respected God enough to follow his 10 commandments? No. You're not telling God to come and rescue you from, your, from the 10 commandments that you wrote by yourself. <laughs> You people are not understanding this thing. God wrote 10 commandments for you to follow. You did not follow it. You are stubborn. You now wrote your own 10 commandments. You are not telling God to come and save you from the things that you wrote with your hand. 
if you had followed his ten commandments, self, you won't even be in that situation. A lot of us are in bad situations because we did not follow the ten commandments. So many times you are suffering for the choices that you made because you did not follow what God asked you to do. Two of us. That's the truth now. Because this guy that you are dating that is breaking you, should be God say you should wait until you marry. You should not fuck. Shabi, you have been fucking. Why are you not calling God? Shabi, he say don't fuck. Keep yourself. Now you are going to go and fuck your womb out. You are not calling God. You are not praying. Rabba seke seke. Did he say me to go and fuck? That's the, because if you actually follow God's Ten Commandments, you might not get into trouble. This trouble we are praying for, it is the Ten Commandments that we refuse to follow. Man. Shabi, God say leave man until they marry you. You say no. It's man you want to follow. You will not follow man. Break Ten Commandments. Not telling God to come and save you. After breaking his Ten Commandments, he has not even punished you for breaking his Ten Commandments. You are telling him to come and save you again. How will he save you? That's why your prayers don't work. So, all these things people are going to church to, I laugh at your foolishness. The same way you chose that man, the same way you're going to use your leg to walk away. The same way you chose that woman, the same way you're going to use your leg to walk away. That is what is called decision. Prayer doesn't come in there. You're going to... You can't pray your way out of that. So when you want to make decision, you need to be careful. Because you are going to face all your consequences. Okoro blessing will not come and save you. Oh, you want to marry. You want to fuck. When the marriage and the fuck does not go right, you're not called Okoro blessing. Bless. How many things have I asked you not to do that you did? How many times do I come and sit on my phone and warn you against some certain things? You go and do it. After doing it, you will not come and meet me to come and save you. If you had listened to me, you wouldn't have even been in that situation in the first place. So I cannot be wasting my time trying to guide you. You go against my guidance. You now come and come to me to come and save you. No, you're going to save yourself. Because if you had followed that guide, you wouldn't even be in that situation in the first place. There are some men I've told you people not to marry. You still go and marry him. That talkative, that will blessing, motivational speaker. I beg, I beg, I beg. I go wash the man clothes. I beg. I go fuck. I go do abortion. I go give him husband material. If I don't wash man clothes, waiting, waiting, I want to do for him. If I don't fuck man, you don't wash clothes. You want to collect the same motivation that you did not collect before. <laughs> so these are the issues. So with this few point of mine, I hope I've been able to convince and not to convince you that. In fact, I don't even know how to stop. So guys, I think we have to go to sleep. Um, I think I've answered all the questions tonight and I hope you learned something from this video. I'm actually having a cold. That's why my voice is a bit cracky. Somebody said, blessing see you. I was married before, but the guy is treating me bad. So I walked. I'm trying to... He's treating me bad. I'm trying to read a comment anyway. Okay. And the guy treating me bad. So I walked out of the marriage. So the pastor that wedded us said that don't like divorce. God separates. Blessing see you. Divorce and separate. The man said... Now I want to read this very clearly. She said, Blessings to you, I was married before, but the guy wasn't treating me was treating me bad and I walked out of the marriage. So the pastor that wedded us said that don't God don't like divorce but separate. Please see your divorce and separation. You know, a lot of pastors are illiterate. Some of them are illiterate, and that's why you have Bibles. Some of you have Bibles that you don't read. Because if you read your Bible, there are some certain things people will not tell you. And that is what it takes to be exposed. When you're exposed, as some things people will tell you and you cannot take it. Exposure makes you have a mind of your own. Go and read your Bible. There is divorce in the Bible. On the grounds of infidelity, you can divorce any bagger. See, why is that people are always turning the Bible upside down? God actually said, if your husband is unfaithful to you, get out of the marriage. But now, you will not leave the marriage, even if it's unfaithful to you. That's what the Bible said. Go and read. Infidelity is a ground to divorce anybody. But a woman will not still go, even if a man is unfaithful. They don't usually read that part of the Bible because they are desperate. But if you are unfaithful to the man, the man will quote that part of the Bible. Infidelity is a ground of divorce. When you are unfaithful to a man, he will throw you out. But if he's unfaithful to you, you can't throw him out. Because you are desperate. Divorce is not a crime. I think in the Old Testament, God said don't divorce. In the New Testament, when God now saw that, ha, these people are going to kill each other. He said divorce. Oh. But on the, if your life is involved, divorce. The Bible said it. 
infidelity, divorce. The reason why the Bible said you should divorce in infidelity is because this person can go and bring a disease and come and give to you. When your husband is unfaithful to you, he has opened the door. People say, if you know you cannot take it, go. So why put twisting the Bible up and down because you are desperate? If you want to stay in an unfaithful relationship, it's your choice. Stop quoting the Bible upside down. You staying in a cheating marriage is you that want to stay. The Bible did not say you should stay. If you want to follow the real part of the Bible, divorce your husband, but no. Your pastor does not preach that part. The Bible said divorce, infidelity. Don't tell me that rubbish. So any pastor that's telling you, carry your Bible and read. It's in the Bible. If you people follow the Bible. You people only read the part of the Bible that suits you. The one that interests you. Uh, the Bible say a man and man. Bible did not say you should go and die in marriage. So if the marriage wants to kill you, take a walk. Eh? If the man is unfaithful to you and you cannot take it, take a walk. So any woman that is in an unfaithful relationship is her choice. If you can stay, stay. If you cannot stay, my sister, run. Don't go and die. So we all have different capacity. Don't say... You know, a lot of people who want you to stay in unfaithful marriages are people who stay there. Because you can take an unfaithful man doesn't mean another woman can take an unfaithful man. We are different people. Stop imposing your reality on, on, on other people. That's the problem. You feel because you can live with a cheating man. You've been living with a cheating man for 10 years. So you want to... Any other person that tell you I'm living, you think the person is not normal. Some of you impose your reality on other people's life. Your reality is not my reality. What works for you cannot work for me. Many of you cannot be blessed and see you. It simply means I'm different from you. It simply means you're different from me. I cannot be you. Your life might be boring to me. My life might be too much for you. So let's learn to respect people's choices. Don't come and force your reality in my, into my own reality. So, the Bible says you can divorce. It's in the Bible. Go and find it. So any pastor that is telling you that God says you should not divorce, you should separate. Tell that pastor to go back to Bible school. He doesn't know what he's preaching. Mm. There was a question somebody asked, and it just... I wanted to read that question, but it has swiped away. I think if I see an important question, I'll just, I'll just pin it. What about widows with three to four kids as seen with baggage cause the kids how do you encourage them or what are your opinions i'm tired please if you want that you you come and book for consultation send me a dm and pay for consultation we can ask, answer all this question i'm having a headache thank you is it possible to make someone think the way you want i mean changing someone's mindset yes but it's stressful it's stressful don't you see what i do online every day Do you know how many insults I've got? Do you know how they drag me? Do you know why a lot of people don't like blessing see you? Because I want to change their mindset. So if you try to change people's mindsets, you might end up being their enemy. People don't like me today because I want to change their mindset. Why do they hate blessing see you? Blessing see you does not think like them. Blessing see you does not reason like them. Blessing see you do not do things that they do. So she's not normal. They think I'm mad. That's the reason why they come. Why do you think they call me controversial? They say I'm controversial because I want to change their mindsets. They say I'm controversial because I don't reason the way they reason. I reason differently. So if you want to change somebody's mindset, you will, it's work. And trust me, I don't think that the work is what it sometimes. So go for those people that have your mindset. Don't waste your time changing people's mindsets. Me, it's because it's a job. It's a profession for me. That's why I'm doing it. If it's not a profession, what is my business with the way that you're thinking? It's my business now. But because it's a profession for me, so it's like a tax. But if, in, if I'm in a relationship, I don't change people's mindset. In my relationship, I don't talk too much. First of all, I don't even date people that don't have my kind of mindset. Start with. And, but in my profession, I can try to want to talk to you because it's a job. But in real life, I don't know how to stress myself. Out. And that's why in my reality, I don't have too many friends. Because I'm not even ready to start convincing you. If I see that your way of life is not my way of life, I won't even interact with you. I don't keep friends. I'm not a friend person. I don't keep friends because I have a different mindset. I have a different IQ. So, I, a lot of people are so shallow-minded. Uh -huh. So, when I come close to you and I see that you are shallow, I run. So, I don't even waste my time trying to want to make you to be thinking deep. No. It's stressful. I can only do that when it comes to my soul. So, if you want to change somebody's mindset, that's entirely your choice. If you have the time and you have the energy. <clears throat> Somebody said, even Jesus, no, if he changed Judas' mindset. That's a very powerful one. 
even Jesus could not change Judas' mindset. So it's now you. The Son of God could not do it. Who are you to do it? So guys, thank you so very, very much for listening to my video. If I begin to answer all these questions today, they are going to drain me. If you want to talk to Blessing CEO, feel free to book consultation. We have a consultation fee. Feel free to book for a consultation. Send me a DM. Send me an email. All these questions you're asking me can be answered, but you have to pay for it. Stop asking me for free. This I do is what I used to, is what I do for a living. Is what I used to sustain myself. So if you have questions that you want to ask that is bothering you, pay for consultation and you get all your questions answered. You Nigerians like free free things. You can always use your money to go and lick ice cream, buy bag, buy shoe. But you want to come and be asking me fool, foolish question for free. Yes. I call it foolish because you don't want to pay for it. You want to come and be asking me and be draining my head. After talking plenty, plenty, tomorrow you still go and fuck that man. Tomorrow you still do the things that you want to do. This year, I'm not wasting my time on giving people free advice. If you want advice and it's important to you, pay for consultation. Don't come and stress. My voice is already cracking. So all this your plenty, plenty question. Go and pay for consultation. Then all your questions will be answered appropriately. You'll get solutions to your questions. Don't come and be asking me free, free questions that you will not follow. Just want to come and stress my head. So I'll finish talking. If I finish talking, you'll call me motivational speaker. Some of you are just looking for other people's opinion. You're not looking for solution. What did I say? Let me quickly write it down, Seth. Some of some some a lot of people are looking for opinions, not solution. <coughs> people are looking for opinions, not solution. That's what L U T I O N. It is because you are looking for opinion and not solution. That's why you find it difficult to pay for it. If you are looking for solution, you pay for it. The reason why most of you don't value therapy is because you are not. You don't even need that thing. You just want to know what blessing think. You will still hear what blessing think and still go and do the thing you want to do. But if you are looking for solution, you pay for it. If you are looking for, if you go to go and see doctor, you no go pay. Eh. You pay for it because that's a solution. But no, some of you just want my opinion. So I cannot be giving you my opinion just for you to be testing your ability. Make a hear waiting blessing won't talk. If blessing talk finish, you go still go fuck. You go still go do runs. You go, why are you not stressing my life? So if you actually want a solution, you pay for it. That's how it works. So you get your solution and use it. Not opinion. You cannot come and be wasting my time because of my opinion. I am not microphone. Mm? Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.